In this slide cast we're going to look at discharge and default. Now these are both covered by section 14 of NZS 3910 and they are slightly related. Uh, discharge of contract is how the contract um, is finished. It starts when there is an acceptance of the offer made by the contractor uh, and when it finishes that's what's called the discharge of the contract. Now, mo there's several ways that a contract can be discharged or ended. The first is by performance. Um, in other words the contractor builds what he's supposed to build and the client pays him for it. But this is the way that it's supposed to finish and this is the way most contracts do finish. However, uh, things can go wrong and there are other ways that a contract can end up um, being finished without um, actually producing the contract works that it was supposed to produce. The first way, that the first alternative is by agreement. Both parties agree to discharge the contract. Um, and once both parties have agreed, the, then that's it, the contract's finished. And that may be because there's been such a significant change that um, they've decided the contract is no longer viable, or it might be that they've decided to make a new contract, or it might be that they agree that um, the other party's just not up to it, or, or the, one of the parties is not going to be able to do their job, and so they think, well, it's, uh, instead of going through court and sort of getting all nasty about it, we'll just agree to um, cut our losses and, and, and um, discharge the contract. Now another way it can be um, discharged is by breach. One of the parties fails to perform their obligations. You recall that the main obligation of the contractor is to build the contract works. Um, the main obligation of the client is to pay him for it. Um, when a breach happens, um, the party that is in breach is said to be in default. Now we're going to be talking about default in the next slide. So we'll talk about this a bit more later on. Um, but And then the last one is by frustration. The contract works cannot be physically carried out. It might be there's a change of law that makes um, doing the work illegal, or it may be that there's been some natural disaster that means that it can't be done, or it might be physically unable to do it. So the classic case is this building here in Christchurch. The first earthquake came along and the building was cracked. A contract was let to fix the cracks. The second earthquake came along while the contract was underway. You can see they had the scaffolding up and demolished the building. So now the original contract for them to repair the cracks can't be carried out because the building's fallen down. So obviously that, that original contract to fix the cracks uh, has to be discharged by frustration because it just can't be done because the building's fallen down. Now the other thing in section 14 is default. Default is where one party fails to comply with their obligations. That is a breach of contract. Now, all because one party's um, d defaulted doesn't mean that the contract is finished. It may be that the contract's finished, but it, it can be that the engineer decides on remedies. For example, um, the, the main way that a principal defaults is failure to pay the contractor. So he's in default if he doesn't make a payment. However, if he makes the payment, then he's no longer in default and the contract can just carry on how it was. However, if he's unable to pay him or he just continues to not pay him, then the engineer may decide that um, he's in breach of the contract, um, he's going to carry on defaulting and therefore the contract has to be um, discharged by breach. So default is um, happens, but it doesn't necessarily mean the contract's going to be finished or discharged. So the ways that a contractor can default is they don't execute the contract agreement. So uh, section 2.7 requires that both parties execute the contract agreement. Confirm that this is our agreement. If they don't do that, then um, they are in default and the contract will probably finish. Um, another way the contractor can default is he doesn't get the bonds and insurances, which is an obligation under the contract. He is also obliged to perform properly to construct the contract works as set out in the contract document. So if he doesn't do that, then once again he's in default. Now that could be remedied by he could fix the um, fix the, um, the the poor quality work, and then he's he's done he's okay. Or it may be that he's incapable of doing it, and the engineer decides that um, he's going to discharge the contract by default. He might uh, sublet the contract works or abandon them. Uh, both in, uh, are not allowed by the contract agreement or he may become bankrupt and be unable to complete the contract works. 
uh, in which case it would probably be discharged. As I said, uh, the principal's main default is failure to pay the contractor, and that may be because um, he um, is um, being being hard nosed about it. He's deciding I'm not going to pay him, getting grumpy about it, uh, or it might be because he's bankrupt. He can't pay him. What well, whatever happens, if he can't pay him, then he is in default. Now this section 14 describes what happens if one of the parties uh, is in default. Uh, there is a procedure that the engineer goes through where he makes the decision um, how to, to remedy this problem. It might be that he's, um, if it's lack of performance by the contractor that he's going to ask the contractor to, to do it properly, um, in which case he'll let the contract keep on running. Uh, or it may be that he decides that the contractor is incapable of fixing the default, that he just, just can't do it, and so he'll decide to terminate the project, the contract. And section 14 sets out all of the processes he needs to go through, and then once he's decided to discharge the contract, um, how he um, l fixes it all up, so how he makes sure that the contractor is paid what he's owed, how he makes sure that the principal is given um, the works in a reasonable state. So that's what section 14 is all about, is how you fix things when everything doesn't go right.